1987, you moved again, this time joining um, a proper club legend in Joe Royal at Oldham Athletic. Um, you went to play on a, a pitch that never suffered because of the weather, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> No, it wasn't great for our joints, I don't think. But uh, in, in, yeah, yeah, obviously we played on the uh, the artificial pitch, um, which you know I asked I asked Joe, you know, uh, you know what what do you think? He went, you'll have no problem on it because you've got a good touch, you keep hold of the ball, and you look after the ball, um, so you won't have a problem on it. So I, I took him on his word and uh, had a really really enjoyable time uh, with. with uh, the, the people, the staff uh, around the football club, uh, the players obviously, and, and the coaching staff. Um, it was an unbelievable time. Um, but I remember sort of playing at home. Uh, my first game, I think we had about just over three and a half thousand there. And by the time I finished, which was only two, two and a half, three years later, the crowds were up to 17,000. It was uh, a remarkable turnaround of, of fortunes. And I think Joe certainly called one of the seasons the pinch me season, um, which put Oldham on the map. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, um, I even remember at, sort of at the time, you know, this small team, uh, so I suppose in the shadow slightly of the bigger clubs in the in the region, just emerging. Uh, that 90, uh, 1989-90 cup run. Um, yeah. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Stuff yeah. that dreams are made of. I mean, what was Joe Raw like as a, as a manager? Uh, outstanding. His his man, man management was was terrific. Not so much, uh, you know, being a, a coach. He had an excellent coach alongside him uh, called Willie Donerkey, who who sort of was his legs. Um, you know, Joe was always on the training field, but sort of Willie took took the majority of the sessions. Uh, but Joe knew how to handle players and personalities, and uh, you know, when when I look back, we we were all um, uh, sort of rejects. You know, we were discarded players from from various clubs. Um, he bought youngsters for you know ten, fifteen thousand that weren't wanted at Man City, Everton, Leeds, and uh, he, he assembled uh, you know a, a group of players that. Majority of them went on to, to bigger and better things. In, uh, I say that with no disrespect to all of them, but you know they went on to play for Everton's, uh, you know, you know, Man United's, you know, re really big clubs, and they were good players. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't you don't achieve what you guys did w without having good players. I mean, the, the way that you describe the way he recruited is similar, actually, in, in some respects to how Jim Smith did it at Oxford United. Um, you know, half a decade earlier in the 80s, because yeah. something that has changed in football is the ability for smaller clubs to sign players who are rejected from the top level of football. Yeah. Um, because, of course, the money is, you know, a, re a sort of reserve player in the Premier League now will probably mm -hmm. be earning 20 to 25,000 a week, which, you know, the wage disparity was nowhere near that big uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s. You could, you could actually build a really good team full of, like you say, players who didn't quite make it at a, at a bigger club. Yeah, and obviously the squads weren't as big, you know, no one carried massive squads at the time. Um, and it, it was a good hunting ground, you know, uh, Joe had a, um, a chief scout, uh, Jim Cassells, who, who went on to um, manage Man City's academy, who, who had a, an eye for a player. You know, and I'm, I'm talking about Mike Milligan, you know, Dennis Irwin, Tommy Wright. Dennis you know. Irwin, what a player. I mean, yeah, so, great players. Yeah, I mean... The, the list goes on. Paul Warhurst, who was another one from from Man City, uh, that Joe hardly played, you know, uh, any money for, and ended up going to Blackburn and, you know, and, and, and bigger things. So Earl Barrett was another one who went on. I was to play just about England. to say one of my yeah. favourite players, and I thought he was—he's probably not given the credit he he should be, because um, he was in an era where there were so many good defensive players in in the top flight. But Earl Barrett was a class defender, wasn't he? Yeah, I'm not, he, he was terrific, and he was a defender. You, you know, he, there, there was no ifs and buts about it. He was purely a defender. Uh, perhaps wasn't great in possession, and you won't mind me saying that. But there's no one could out jump him. There was no one could outrun him, and there was no one that could out muscle him. And at times, I think when we were playing, uh, Joe would just go man for man at the back and pe let people flood forward. Um, it was quite an exhilarating uh, period of. You know, a football uh, which all the players thoroughly enjoyed. 
Oh, I can absolutely imagine it. In your first season, you finished 10th, then 16th the year after. In 89-90, you finished 8th. And, you know, unbelievable uh, run in the in the League Cup during that era. And in October 1989, in a certain League Cup tie, which I don't know if you ever get tired of hearing about it. I, <laughs> I would imagine not, but you scored six times in a 7-0 win over Scarborough. I mean, what was that must have been mad for you? Yeah, it was uh, an incredible evening. And, uh, you know, I, I, I often say to people, it's my anniversary today. Yeah. And, and they say, uh, well, how many years have you been married? I think, no, 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 no. You know, it's... it's 30, The important it was, one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's 30 years, you know, it's 25th of October. It's been 30 years and, you know, no one's broken the record yet. And, uh, you know, we get a go it. But I can still describe the goals. Um, but, yeah, it was... Um, they weren't scuff finishes, were they, Frankie? Uh, one, the first one was. Uh, the, the rest were really good goals, you know, some really good team play, you know, a little bit of individual work as well. But uh, what people, you know, some pessimists say, well, it was only Scarborough, and you were on the plastic. Scarborough had just beaten Chelsea in the previous round they played to us. And, yeah. uh, you know, we were quite, I, I wouldn't say worried, but we were respectful of, of them. And... Uh, I mean, luckily for us uh, and for myself, I think I, I only had six or seven chances and I took all of them. Um, and I laid the other one on for Andy Ritchie. So I had a great night and uh, obviously to progress to the, to the next round at the time was fantastic. And then to go all the way to the final was unbelievable. And we were also, I think, in the uh, FA Cup semi-final that year as well. So uh, we were in, always in and around the playoffs. Um, and I think the, the season sort of just caught up with us, uh, being a small squad, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, you know, we sort of ran out of steam towards the end. But uh, the the atmosphere, the um, the support around the town, uh, I mean, it, it just put Oldham on the map. You know, we, we came from nowhere. And like I said earlier, we were a bunch of misfits put together and, and we achieved, you know, really good things. That's the best kind, though. Best kind of teams, a bunch of misfits put together, go on. And <laughs> it's, it's brilliant stuff, you know. You, yeah. It's all this building stuff from your academy and signing you yeah. know, 80 million pound strike. It's all it's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I think Joe, is, you know, he looks back fondly of, uh, of those days as well. You know, we had, we have fond memories. Uh, you know, we're still in touch um, as a majority of the players are. We, we were just a unique bunch of players that put together and we, we 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 thoroughly enjoyed each other's company on and off the field um and uh the rewards were there for you know for everybody to see yeah great times great times and that cup run by the way you beat leeds uh 4-2 on agra over two legs you beat scarborough 7-0 you beat arsenal 3-1 <coughs> uh then you got to the fifth round beating southampton 4-2 i think it was in or no 2-0 in the replay after a two all draw and then you beat West Ham 6-0 and lost, obviously, the, the second day 3-0, but won 6 for an aggregate to get through to, to the final. I actually watched the final um, back recently. I remember watching it at the time with, with my dad, thinking, who who's this old athletic team? Because, I mean, you know, they were uh, sort of, you were you were in the second division, so you wouldn't have been getting particularly the national coverage. But what was that Wembley trip like for you? Oh. It was every player's dream to play at Wembley, and uh, obviously to to get there and play there was you know uh, one of the pinnacles of uh, anyone's career. Um, I was amazed at how many people from Oldham turned up. I, I, I didn't realise how many people lived in Oldham, and you know there was forty odd thousand Oldham supporters there. Where, where did they all come from? Um, so I could imagine half the town being empty whilst we were down south. Um, the, just the, the flood of blue and white around the approach to Wembley um, and, and the noise within the within the stadium and, and actually walking you know on, through the tunnel onto the pitch was, was just uh, an exhilarating feeling. I can imagine uh, it was a close game. I mean, you lost one 0 Nigel Jameson scoring the only goal, but it could have been very very different on another day. Do you still look back though and? You must be still immensely proud of, of having competed in a, in a final, given that you were at the time a second division club. Yeah, I think we all were, but I think there was a bit of disappointment certainly after the game because, you know, like you've just mentioned, you know, we thought we had a chance of winning it. Um, we had great belief in ourselves. 
Um, and you know, we we've, we've got that far and actually thought we could win it. You, you know, so we we went there with plenty of confidence. The unfortunate thing for me that was probably my third last game for Oldham Athletic. You know, I. I, uh, I think I played two or three games after that final. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have played in the final. Um, I was carrying a knee injury. Um, uh, we came back uh, uh, on the same evening because we, I think we played Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday after that final. And, and the final was held quite late uh, uh, during those times. And um, I, I had surgery again in the summer and I never played that year after uh, trying to recover from surgery and uh, you know ultimately never played for Oldham again at the, you know I, sort of my last game I was 26 years of age which still hurts it still hurts you know to this day um, I know I hear retired players saying I don't miss the game but I, I sort of miss quite a large chunk of, of, of playing football and uh, you know it's, uh, it's still you know plays at the back of my mind what what could I have achieved um, along with all those good players that went on to better things.